So Srila Raghunath Das Goswami has written a book about this story. It's not a very long book. It's about 11 pages. So I think I'll read from the book and then comment a little bit here and there. Obeisances to the son of Gopendra Nanda, who enchants the world with his lila, whose complexion is like a blooming, blooming blue lotus, and who is as beautiful as millions of cupids. Obeisances to the divine couple, Sisi Radha Krishna, who are immersed in the ocean of playful buying and selling of pearls, and who are eager to defeat each other. I worship that full moon that rose from the womb of Mother Sachi to distribute the nectar of his own loving devotional service on earth. I bow down to my spiritual master, who gave me the holy name, the son of Mother Sachi, Sarup Damana, Sila Rupa Goswami and his older brother, Sila Sanatan Goswami, the great abode of Mathura, and the pastures of Raja, Radhakund Govardhan Hill, and the hope of attaining Radhika and Madhava by his grace. The ocean of Vrindavan is filled with waves of the nectarian pastimes of Lord Hari. I bow down to the most blissful devotees who dwell there. One day after having heard something about this, Satyabhama eagerly asked Krishna, from where have these sweet vines, from whose pearls my bangles were made, come from, O Lord? Krishna, Krishna remembering the story, became slightly afflicted, with, afflicted within, but joyful without, and said, there was a time when pearls grew on vines. Someone turned it down. No, no, not volume down. It went down. Leave it up because my voice is very weak. Now they're kept in oy So there was a time when pearls grew on vines. Now they're kept in oysters. Such a bomber became curious after hearing this and repeatedly encouraged Krishna to tell her more. <laughs> Krishna then said, One day, in the month of Kartik, there was a Deepavali festival in Gogul near Govardhan. Every, everyone there was busily engaged in preparing all the paraphernalia for this. The coward men were especially absorbed in decorating their cows and pets, and the gopis were decorating themselves in their dressing rooms with different ornaments. Srimata Radharani was decorating herself with her sakkis with the best pearls in a pavilion by the bank of the Malya Harikund near Radhakund. I eagerly went there when I heard this from my pet parrot, who's, just, who's justly named Fichaksana, clever, to beg some pearls from them, as I was eager to decorate my cows, Hamsi and Harini, with them. But they were very clever and just looked at me with disdain from the corners of their lotus blue eyes, like sages with half-closed eyes. When I saw this, I told them, Oh, you mountains of pride, coming forth from attaining the valuable touchstone of youthful beauty, will you not even lend an ear to the request of your dear friend? Hearing this, the lively Lalita, smiling at her friend, said with feigned anger, Oh, upstart, why are you wasting your time asking for pearls that are fit only for great queens? Hearing this, I curiously replied, Oh, if you don't give me some pearls for decorating the four horns of my two most dear cows, then their decoration cannot be completed. Where else will I get pearls? Alita replied, Oh, Krishna, there's not even one pearl good enough for your cows. Hearing this, I said, Oh, most talkative Lalita, just wait, you miser. I will get pearls from my mother Vrajeshwari and plant them in a field. Then I will have more pearls than you. <coughs> when I went to my mother with this request, she said, Silly boy, silly boy, pearls don't grow in fields. But I assured her, You will see. Within three days, my pearl vine will sprout. So she gave me some pearls, and I planted them in a field by the Jalaharana Ghat, with three friends helping me to fence that place off. Then for the sake of avenging myself for their refusal to give me pearls, 
I had one friend uh, go to them to ask for milk to water the pearl seeds. But they said, how can you grow pearls in a field and nourish them with milk? We only give milk to our cows. We're not obliged to grow pearl vines with milk to decorate Krishna's cows. Then I took milk from our own Goshala, lots of it, and sprinkled my pearls with it every day. Then on the fourth day, the vines came out. I was in ecstasy and pulled at my mother's dress to show her the sprouting pearl plants. She was amazed and thought to herself, what is this? She went back home and told all the cowherds who, after hearing about it, all came there to see. They thought the area was just full of thorns. So they climbed a nearby kadamba tree to look over the fence. They were amazed when they saw the beautiful vines full of honeybees, intoxicated by the wonderful fragrance. The gopis were also amazed to see the beautiful flowers growing from the vines. <coughs> Eight types of pearls had grown on my vines and they were all most charming. When the gopis saw all of this, they became greedy for pearls and consulted their counselor. Oh friend, now Krishna will surely not give us any pearls. Why don't we plow a field twice as big as Krishna's and grow our own pearls there? Hearing this, Lalita said, Oh gopis, are you afflicted with disturbed life airs? Everyone in Vrindavan knows that Krishna knows a lot of amazing mantras through which he was able to do things like lift Govardhan Hill. What is so wonderful for him to grow a pearl vine? That very delicate blue lotus that grew from the pond of the womb of Mother Yasoda must have some special power to do these things. Then Tugavicha said, Why don't we ask Nandi Muki, the pupil of Mother Purnamasi, if she's also initiated in such mantras? All the gopis said, Well spoken, Tugavicha. And they went to Nandi Muki to tell her of her plan. Let the desire tree of our playful eagerness grow, they said. Remembering how I grew my pearl tree, Nandi Muki said, Oh, Sakis, it was not by mantra that Mukunda could grow a pearl tree in clay soil. The gopis asked, then how could he do it? Nandamukhi replied, because he has natural powers like that. What is the wonder that Krishna can grow a pearl tree in an abode where the trees are made of coral, have sapphire leaves and buds of diamonds and pearls, and fruits of rubies, and other trees are golden? I'm sure that if you girls plant pearls and sprinkle them, even a tastier fresh butter you will grow even bigger, bigger pearl trees. Drinking Nandi Mukhi's sweet words with the cup of their ears, the gopis praised her and embraced her with great satisfaction. Then they happily returned home, took all the pearls they could find, planted them in a, a, scare, in a carefully protected field and started sprinkling them three times a day with the best milk, butter and ghee. Hearing of their activities, Chandravali and her group became greedy and envious, and they also planted many pearls, using all the pearls they could find in their homes and on their bodies. Then after a few days, all the gopis were devastated in their pride when they found that thorny twigs had sprouted from their pearl seeds, and they became afraid that I would ridicule them. One, one day the adults found that all their pearls and milk products had disappeared from their homes, having been used by their daughters for pearl trees. So they inquired from them. The older gopis said, oh, oh, old ones, our girls have used them all for planting pearl trees. If they sprout, we will gain wealth, just like Krishna did when they grew pearls, when he grew pearls in his field. They were suitable for great queens. When Vishaki inspected the sprouts on the gopis' field, she said, Oh, Sakis, I do not think that these sprouts are quite the same as Krishna's. We've protected our fields from the eyes of Krishna's friends, so I wonder what could have happened. When I heard from my friend that only thorns sprouted from the gopis' fields, I went there just for fun and said, slightly smiling, Oh, I have heard that you've grown so many nice pearls. Since I'm your best friend, will you give me the first fruits of your harvest? The gopis replied, if he had really planted pearls, then why is it? Isn't it the whole Vraja filled with pearls now? 
proudly denying their humiliation. I said, why are you giving up the Vaishnav, the Vaisha duties of charity and talking and, and taking to miserliness? Then I lavishly decorated all my cows, calves, oxen, bullocks, goats, and even all the monkeys with pearl ornaments. The gopis being afraid of their parents' anger uh, over having lost all their wealth of pearls, wondered what to do. They told each other, it's all Nandimukhi's fault. The traitor has joined Krishna's side. So they went there and severely chastised her. But Nandimukhi said, I swear to you on all my penances that I did not deceive you. It is rather your own fault. The Gopi said, why? Nandimukhi said, because you made such a noise about planting these pearls that Krishna's friends have heard of it. Did you keep any guard around the fields? The girls admitted they had not. Nandimukhi angrily said, these clever boys must have heard what you planted. Then that great deceiver Krishna must have bribed them with sweet rice, especially the greedy ones like Madhu Mango, who's easily bribed in such ways. Then they must have crept into your fields, taken all your pearls and planted seeds of thorny plants instead. Then they threw all the pearls into the Yamuna. I know this for sure. Not satisfied with her explanation, the girl said, Oh, you great, greatest of cheaters, Nandimuki. Oh, crooked god sister of that clown Madhu Mango. You're just a Kali Yuga ascetic. Just wait. Coming back home again, they considered once more what to do. Shimata Radharani said, Nandimuki may have deceived us or not, but I'm very afraid of my parents. We can only pacify their anger if we can show them some pearls. We must make some deal with Krishna. <coughs> the clever Chandramukhi then took some gold as a prize to pay Krishna for some pearls and said, I will take Kanchanalata with me and we will somehow buy some pearls from Krishna. Taking the gold, they came to Krishna's pearl garden. When they saw me sitting there with Subal, they told him, Oh Subal, we've heard that you have grown fresh pearls. Take this gold in exchange for some of the most exquisite among them. Then I said, once I came to you girls for pearls and you did not give me any. You did not even give me a milk cup to sprinkle my pearl field. I would rather toss all my pearls into the Yamuna. You may even offer me all your domestic belongings in exchange for them, but I will not give you even one pearl of mine. Then Kanchalalata and Chandimukhi said, How can we be saved from our parents' anger now? It is too far to go to Mathura for pearls now. O Subal, please meditate for us. Tell us what price we must pay. Hearing the, oh, not meditate, mediate for us. Hearing this, I said, Well, I'm very soft-hearted. I'm not so hearted like you girls. I suppose I must let you buy some. But how will we determine appropriate price? Subal, taking the role of mediator, said, So my friend, how much do you want for them? I replied, look, Subal, these girls were sent by Radha and the others. They do not know that this gold is not sufficient for my pearls. Therefore, how can I negotiate a suitable price with them? Um, even though there are so many Chintamani stones, um, that is not sufficient. Even the Kastuba gem which dwells in the chest of the Lord of Vaikuntha cannot be one billionth part of the price of just one of my pearls. Krishna was, of course, speaking the truth. No. Hearing this, Kanchanalata looked at me angrily, frowning, said, Oh, brainless Chandramukhi, I should, have, should not have come with you to see this villain. I still came here on your request to get some pearls, but now I'm leaving. Chandramukhi replied, Kanchanalata, you are speaking the truth. I'm also going. How can I ascertain a price for these pearls alone? When I saw them both leaving, I said, Subal, in this way, we cannot ascertain a price for these pearls. Subal appealed to Chandramukhi, Oh, Saki, my friend, we'll only discuss the price when all the gopis are here, like Radha and Lalita. They can come and take the desired amount of pearls. I will mediate. Thus Chandramukhi and Kanchanalata returned to Radha and told her, with faint anger, all that had transpired. Then Shimata Radharani, Lalita, and all the Sakis came to the pearl garden where Chandramukhi told Subal, Friend Subal, here we are. 
let us in a friendly spirit ascertain a suitable price. Then Subal called me and explained everything. I came and asked, why has Radha not come personally? Tungaviji replied, O oh, Prince of Kuku, she is lovingly engaged in household duties by Jutila, unable to leave home. Then Madhu Mangal secretly told me that Radha was hiding close by, hearing everything we have said. So I told Tungavija, doesn't she want any pearls then? Tungavija said, well, we will take her share of the pearls. I replied, Vishaka is just like Radha and Radha is just like Vishaka. Then Vishaka can pay for Radha also. But anyone who does not come personally to get her pearls must pay four times the normal amount. This is my firm decision. Then I told Subal, bring the pearl box here and show them our pearls. You can take the smallest pearl out and give it to Vishaka for Srimata Radharani. If she cannot pay, then she will go. Then the same will go for her as for Radha. Four times the regular amount. As long as Radha does not come, I will keep Vishaka locked up in the prison house of the Madhavi Kunja. Then Madhu Mangal said, dear friend, even if you obstruct them, the other men's wives are always able to escape. I replied, I know that, but don't worry. I know it's very improper to destroy the good name of housewife. But the scriptures also say, Swakariyam udaret pragya kurvan api vikahitam. Wise men sometimes perform wicked acts, but in the process, they always elevate themselves. And in the Samhitas, it is said, Ahara vyapahara salat jamapi. While eating, doing business, one should not feel ashamed. I will still stay at the Madhavi Kunja, remaining awake the whole night, guarding my prisoners. <laughs> Hearing this, Subal smiled and said, Oh dear poor Satam, how long must Vishaka remain in anxiety? I replied, as long as Radha has not personally come here to pay for her pearls. Then Mang Madhu Mangal said, Friend, Srimata Radhari is more expert than any other gopi especially when it comes to running away. As you noted, when you tried to, to tax her for carrying ghee over Govardhan Hill, you became bewildered by her then and became overwhelmed by dizziness. I'm very worried the same thing will happen here. <laughs> then I smiled and told Madhu Mangal in front of everyone, friend, you're uselessly worrying. I won't become dizzy and even if I do, then I will use her left lotus stem like arm as a pillow for my head. Lie on, on her chest using my yellow cloth as a pillow. I will enjoy uh, myself having a loving discussion with her about the prize of pearls and in this way we will quickly pass through the night. Otherwise, I will enjoy with her in my dream keeping her bound firmly on the dense darkness of my chest as in prison holding her hips tight with my heart sapphire colored snake like arms. It is Madhurya Rasa after all. Hearing this everyone laughed but Radha looked at me and Vishaka from the corner of her eyes said go on go to Chandravali's coons and stay there chastising me with a smile. Vishaka looked at me in a crooked way and said oh villain get out get out. Then she hid among the sakis. Then they all told Subal Subal give up your dirty tricks if you still want to sell your pearls, then show them to us and tell us a reasonable price. Otherwise, we will go home. We can get also pearls in Matura if we want. Hearing this, Subal opened the pearl basket and showed them our pearls. Then he told me, Dear friend, it's only by your mercy that you wish to deal with these girls at all. All their domestic wealth and their entire wealth of cows is not a sufficient price for even one of our pearls. So be kind and give them some pearls for just a small price or even just for free for getting your mice lenses. I replied, no, 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 my friend. Our profession as, Vaishnav, as Vaishas is to do business. Now what can I do but to take heed of your request? I, was, I will be somewhat lenient in my price to them. Subal laughed and said, well said, my friend. Let them pick out their favorite pearls and make a pile of them and then you decide on a price. I thought it was a very good idea. Subal said, please sell them the pearls at, at the price uh, the humbly suggest. I wondered what they had said to him to make him suggest that. Subal then said, 
They say that they can get pearls in Matura, but it would take them two days to get the pearls from there, and their parents are becoming more and more angry, waiting for their lost pearls and ornaments to be returned. Therefore, they gave up all shame and approached here in the forest. They said, if you give them the pearls now, they will pay you in a day or two, and that you should have faith in them as honest girls who are objects of your love anyway. If you do so, your affection for them will simply increase. Then I laughed and told Subal, Oh, you are a very purified intellect, but you do not understand anything about their behavior. They're all great experts in diplomatic trickery. As soon as they have received the pearls, they will take them inside the fortresses of their husband's home, on the high mountains of the elders' protection. Then what will we do? Subal replied, They will not do that, my friend. And even if they do, I will take them into the forest with the Arjuna tree and the blackbirds, and I will embrace them, and so on. When they think, <clears throat> sorry, anyway, skip a little bit. So as we're reading, we can see that ultimately the, the pearls are an excuse, huh? are used simply as a, as a means to increase Madhurya Ras. Um, and meeting is never cheap, meeting is never easy um, between Radha and Krishna. There are always obstacles. Um, it is more the anticipation that, that counts in the spiritual world. It is more like that. Anyway, in the end, in the end, Radha and Krishna uh, were pleased to be in each other's company and to share their pearls. And Satyabhama was very pleased to hear the story. So I was reading because I felt that since Raghunadas Goswami was personally speaking, uh, why would I uh, retell the story in my own words and I might miss something? Uh, because Raghunadas is obviously uh, a Parisat devotee of the Lord, one who is seeing the pastimes of the Lord, one who is not hearing about the pastimes of the Lord, but one who is actually seeing the pastimes of the Lord. So we, of course, see through the eyes of Raghunadas, we are hearing, huh? and uh, I like this metaphor of growing pearls, and I often use it as an example in relation to initiation, and that at the time of initiation we are receiving pearls from our spiritual master, and that we should plant these pearls and that we should water them with devotional service. And when we water them with devotional service, then these pearls, these will produce, they sprout, they will produce bushes and many, many other pearls will come from them. Um, that is the way. So it is very important that this initiation is taken in that spirit, um, in a spirit where initiation means that one must make offerings. It doesn't just mean that we take, it means we must give. So, yes, some treasures were received, pearls were received, but now bring the milk of devotional service. Now bring the milk of, of all your pranarata diyavacha, of all your hard labor, of your intelligence of your words um, of all your wealth bring it all in service um, because that is how we are watering that initiation by devotional service then it will become wonderful but if we just are taking the pearls and we plant them sort of at the time of initiation but we don't water them uh, 
then our initiation vows will become dry. They'll become dry and we'll be initiated but still struggling, struggling with our mind, still struggling with our senses because we're not fulfilled. And when the heart is not fulfilled by devotional service, then uh, then we try to fill the emptiness with, material, with temporary enjoyment. <laughs> Only when the heart is filled with deep absorption in service, when there is so much service that there's no room for anything else, only then, uh, only then, is there no room for any material desire. So in this way, as we are growing the pearls we receive, we'll get more pearls. And as we keep on making offerings in devotional service, our wealth increases to a point that there's no more room for material desires. Then we can actually attain fulfillment. So this is the purpose of initiation and um, I like to compare that pearl story to, to that just as a meditation for all of you. Um, then we are closing the day. Um, we have We have seen how Vrinda Devi makes all the arrangements for Krishna's pleasure in his transcendental playgrounds and that pleasure, Krishna's pleasure is the focus. When I spoke that Rasa is predominant it means ultimately Krishna's pleasure. Krishna's pleasure is predominant. And when Krishna's pleasure is predominant then automatically Everyone's pleasure is, is there um, because Krishna is so lovable. Um, Krishna is said is, um, is irresistible. Um, Krishna is so irresistible you have to worship him. Uh, he is so amazing that as we get to know Krishna, we simply have to worship Him, we have to please Him. So, based on that principle, um, based on that principle, we are now here um, to serve Him. And we are here to, um, to make arrangements for Krishna's pleasure. Um, that's simply what we're doing on this Parikrama, hearing about Krishna, speaking about Krishna, chanting His holy name, um, glorifying Krishna for His pleasure. So that's the first focus, to act for Krishna's pleasure. That is the nature of the spiritual world. That is the business of Vrinda Devi, that is the business of Srimata Radharani, that is the business of all the gopis, Krishna's pleasure. That is our first point. Then we went to Pavan Saravar, which is like a playground, an enjoy, a, a wonderful pond where one can enjoy, named after Pavana Gopa, the father of Vishaka. And, and so nice, uh, that such we also had some little play although no one fell in the water <laughs> that was a little disappointed yeah. uh, but anyhow it, for a moment it seemed close and we thought someone might just fall in and Madhu Pandit definitely with his backpack on stole the show. So there was entertainment. Huh? And in the same way the cowherd boys would uh, would engage in in playful pastimes. Uh, meanwhile we saw some temples and it was not difficult to imagine a beautiful palace on the other side built by uh, Maharaj Rishabhanu 
so that Srimati Radharani could be there at Pavan Sarovar in all comfort. Uh, and then finally, uh, we came here to, to meditate on Krishna's planting pearls. Uh, so at that time, Krishna was still quite young, the gopis were still very young, so it was a great embarrassment uh, to their parents uh, that the pearls were lost. Uh, but in the end, uh, it was, as I said, it was Diwali, or Deepawali, and Krishna was thinking of decorating his cows, and the girls were thinking of decorating themselves. So that also is a natural uh, division uh, of labor, what to do. That's, uh, that's how it is in the spiritual world. And whatever goes on in the material world is a reflection <coughs> of that. So what can we say? But all these things, um, we see that Krishna was showing the girls, no, they should go for the cows. Uh, so there was a hidden message also, because the cows are first. Uh, somehow or other, we should serve the cows first. Um, at Pavan Saravar, there was one person who asked donations for Go Seva. Some people gave. Uh, the ones who gave are fortunate because because Go Seva is is the first is our first service. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is described that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu met an astrologer. And he asked the astrologer, who was I in my last life? So the astrologer did all these calculations and he did it three times and he was shocked. He didn't know what to say then. So, what, are you, what do your calculations say? The calculations say that in your last life you were the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> Ah, Lord Chaitanya said, no, no, that's all wrong. I happen to know what I was in my last life. He said, in my last life, I was a cowherd boy. And I was taking care of the cows. And because of this pious activity of taking care of the cows, in this life, I took birth as the son of a Brahmana. Like that he was saying. Huh? So, there's no doubt that by serving the cows our piety will increase so much we will become automatically dear to Krishna and when we're dear to Krishna then he'll throw some pearls our way uh, that is the point he'll throw some spiritual wealth our way he'll throw some mercy our way and that mercy is what we need because we operate on mercy only Without mercy, how can we chant? Uh, without mercy, we cannot chant. So we have to look for mercy so that we can chant. <coughs> it's the only way. We have to beg for mercy wherever we can. And now we are here and there's mercy. The, they say that this is actually the, 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 the pond. Huh? The other one might also be the pond. I think, I don't know these things, if such things are exactly right after 5,000 years. But this is the place, this is the area where the pastime took place. If someone has a car and they... Ah, we're only finishing up now. So as I said, we are closing the day. We went to these three places. And with these three places, our meditation continued. And each day, 
We're meditating a little bit and we look at it from this way and that way, from various angles. And slowly, uh, slowly we are approaching the spiritual reality. We have discussed earlier how there is Prakat Lila, Aprakat Lila, the pastimes we can see and what we cannot see. And gradually, uh, we are seeing, we're seeing through the ears, we're seeing through hearing. Right? So in this way, we're getting some darshan of Radha and Krishna. And although we are not qualified, still we can pray that one day we may become qualified. And meanwhile, while we are here, let us do some service in the hope that Krishna will throw some pearls in our way. And the pearls I'm talking about are the pearls of mercy. Uh, the pearls of transcendental mercy. Because without them, how can we ever do devotional service and stick to it? Not so easy. We need those pearls of mercy. Thank you very much. CC Mukta Charita Kija. Srila Prabhupada Kija. So you are almost welcome to come again tomorrow. And those who are already booked for the whole Parikrama, thank you very much. But if you only came for the day, come for another day and another day. Because this is the month of Kartik. We'll go to the last day of Kartik. And what better way to spend Kartik than to simply spend our time hearing, chanting and remembering about Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah.